Hello everyone, I am Fabiana, a Colombian based in the Netherlands for the last four years. On this particular occasion, I want to acknowledge the community that supported me during this research. I want to thank the community of Africa and Weicht in Rotterdam South, a community in its majority of first and second generation of migrants coming from many different places in the Caribbean, the Middle East and North Africa. I thank them for sharing with me who they are and the complexities of their realities. And to you, welcome to our presentation. As a discipline with the capacity to mediate relationships, design has increasingly been understood as a socially relevant activity supporting societal transformation. In particular, participatory design was a big step to democratizing the design practice and opening the space to include the voices of the people intended to use the design outcome. However, as design practices move to the public domain, the profession fails to understand the ethical complexities of working with a democratic approach, ignoring that involving users in a project leads to addressing issues of politics and power. Inserted in a complex system and dealing with different stakeholders, designers might have practices, attitudes and assumptions that perpetuate suppression and inequalities inside the design process itself. As such, participatory designers can maintain even unconsciously the same power dynamics they are claiming to change, affecting the most vulnerable in the process. The current study aims to better prepare designers to engage in more power balance relationships within participatory projects. For this, six different explorations have been conducted in the neighborhood of Africa and Weicht in the south of Rotterdam looking for horizontal connections with local residents and finding dialogical spaces for re-evaluating the role of the designer inside the process. Our explorations result in a framework referring to the changing role of the designer in power balance design processes. Moreover, we present five propositions that support participatory designers to be better prepared to establish more power balance and accountable relationships when collaborating with communities. The study takes as a main inspiration the work of the Brazilian philosopher Paulo Freire. His work has inspired many scholars and practitioners, especially in the Global South, developing new theories and concepts for design that link from the Western practice, proposing local and hybrid approaches in order to address social issues. The six partially unplanned explorations consisted of different ways of interacting with the community in the context. Taking into consideration that Piri reinterpreted the role of the so-called ego designer to the role of the facilitator, the explorations demonstrated how this role of the designer can be pushed further. As such, in some of the explorations, the role of the designer transformed into the role of the designer participant. In exploration one, the designer participated in the context as a careful observer, while in exploration two, the participation consisted in playing a basketball game. In exploration three, the designer participated in a street brunch and in a citizen's meeting. The exploration opened spaces for the designer to join and know better the context, its dynamics and relevant topics for the community. Encountering the community in a more horizontal way permitted the designer to be part of activities and spaces that probably could be unreachable from a position of power and control of the process. In exploration 4, participating in an open theater organized by the community allowed the designer to understand the values and beliefs of the context from their own point of view and show other ways of participation framed by the community and for the community. The exploration also allowed for meaningful dialogues with some other participants as the designer did not need to focus the attention on facilitating any activity. Exploration 5 was a core reflection meeting to discuss the topic of gentrification in the neighborhood. This exploration showed the relevance of finding common care with the community as it allows the designer and the community to see each other as partners working towards the same goal. Finally, exploration ceased, consistent of small interactions maintaining the relationship built in the other explorations towards periodical dialogue in the context and online. It showed that the ways of engaging with the community creating strong bonding and relationships not dependent on any design activity or process. Now, let's talk about the framework that resulted from the explorations. The horizontal axis of the framework shows the different roles of the designer already mentioned. 
The red color represents the power designers have over the process and other social actors in the project depending on the role. In the role of the facilitator, the designer has more power over the community and the project because in that role, designers still have much of the decision making, control over the process, the framing of the problem, etc. When moving to the role of the participant, the designer's power over the community and the project decreases as more agency is given to other social actors. As power is relational and contextual, the less power the designer has in the project, the more power the community is capable of exercising, as they are not limited by any designing position defined by the designer. The community's power to act is represented in blue in the framework. If we compare this axis with the Arnstein slider of participation, the power and agency of the community translates into more citizens' control in the process. When understood inside a PD process, what the framework shows is that the role of the designer may and should change depending on the moment of the project and what the situation is requiring. As such, the designer can move between being a facilitator, a partner, or a participant depending on any specific moment of the process. This constant re-evaluation of the role of the designer is possible thanks to the dialogue between the community and the designer. Only by creating those dialogical spaces, the role of the designer could be re-evaluated and negotiated with the community in mutual understanding during the whole process. Freudian theory enables interpreting the exploration as a path for the designer's liberation. As Freire affirms, liberation can only come from the oppressed, who, in an act of love, love liberate themselves and the oppressor. In the same way, in the framework, the designer can be liberated from the oppressive role from facilitator to participant and partner thanks to the community when willing to interact in those spaces of dialogue. Now let's talk about the five propositions that aim to support participatory designers to be better prepared to establish more power balance and accountable relationships when collaborating with communities. The first proposition is that a power balance process is built together with the community. This kind of process entails giving relevance to the relational aspect of the project and giving space to the designer to enter into close relation with people in their context. In this way, comprehension and trust can be built to develop a project structure and plan that aligns and respects the identities of all the social actors in the process. It also presupposes that the designer should not enter the process with a specific end goal in mind but it will be built together and in dialogue with the community to avoid influencing the outcome, thus giving away power to others to act and decide. The second proposition is that for a power balance process, the designer needs to be liberated. To be able to develop a PD process that is power balanced and more socially just, the role of the designer in PD needs to be reinterpreted. In this research, the liberation of the designer implied de-learning the normalized practices of a designer in a PD process and engaging with the community differently. The liberation of the designer implied a constant re-evaluation and negotiation of the role that could be accomplished by having spaces for dialogue with the community. As such, some practices like spending time with people outside the design activities are fundamental to being able to establish dialogical spaces. In line with Freire's theory, dialogue becomes the tool for the liberation of all social actors involved in the process. The third proposition is that the designer joins the community to design with them. A PD process that is power balanced entails seeing the project as a collaboration and not just as community participation. The horizontal process does not conceive an end user to design for, but considers the community as an equal partner to design with. The fourth proposition is that a project for social justice and change is more than what can be framed by design. Collaboration intends that everyone involved in the process works together and contributes from their knowledge and capabilities. Especially when developing projects that aim to tackle complex social problems, it seems crucial to recognize that the project itself is more than what the design practice can accomplish. Design skills are, are one more thing brought to the table, as to reach social change is necessary to work with others. Lastly, a power balance process can be built in reflection and action. 
During this study, it was acknowledged that to build the power balance BD process, awareness of power dynamics and how they affect the relationship of all social actors is needed. As such, the notion of praxis developed by Freire is a useful practice in a process that aims to be power balanced. Doing periodical reflections about the activities and actions taken in the context was, in this case, a good strategy to avoid biases and overpass unconscious oppressive attitudes. Thank you for listening to my presentation. I am excited and grateful to discuss with you and the rest of the panelists' ideas and experiences around these topics.